Good morning, boys and girls. This is Rockin' Robins aboard the USS Kraken. And this is Mr. Robin's neighborhood. Let me put on my sweater and then we'll take a tour of our nice instruments down here. Don't like that, eh? Okay, no problem. Let's start our tour of the nav map. The nav map can be moved by clicking anywhere on the nav map and dragging the map. Unfortunately, it can also be moved by move, putting your cursor on the edge and watching it scroll off into oblivion. I hate that. Here you have a scale in nautical miles, and if we scroll up and down, you can see the scale change. I usually call the scales by the last number here. This would be the 8.4 scale. That would be the 3.3 scale. So you can talk to each other about what what scale chart you're using. Let's take a quick tour of all the instruments we have. First is the pencil. This is a marker, and all it does is it makes an X. Now you can click on an existing X and drag it wherever you want. If, while it's red, you hit the delete key, it disappears. Um, you can make all kinds of X's, and they're marked sequentially. that. Or I believe you can do the control delete thing and delete them all, but I never do that. Our next tool is the compass. A compass draws a circle with a known radius and it tells you what that radius is and gives you a single radius line. You can use that radius line for all kinds of interesting things. Let's make a circle here. It tells you how many yards it is up to five miles and then it gives it in nautical miles. There you go. 10,000 yards, 5 miles. And it gives you miles and tenths of a nautical mile. Now, when you click again, it's uh, frozen in place. If you click a third time, you can make another circle. Now, if you click on an existing figure, you'll notice that the figure turns red if you over the arrowhead, or if you go over the center of the circle, if you want to move the circle, click on the center and drag it. So, for instance, if you had uh, if you had a sub that was running around, you wanted to see if you were visible or not. A good idea is if they're within, say, five and a half miles or thereabouts, uh, you can figure they can probably see you. So you put that over your sub and you say, "Man, the sky is almost where you can see me." Time to do some evasive action: submerge, run away do whatever. I use this for airplanes. I run a five mile diameter circle around my around my sub. We got an airplane out got an airplane out here and he's cruising somewhere around here. What I'll do is I'll take my ruler tool, get a little ahead of myself, and I'll draw a little ice cream cone out of this thing. If he cruises into this ice cream cone, I know he's going inside the visibility circle. I have plenty of time to submerge before he enters this circle and can save me. Not a problem. If he is outside the cone, I don't have to worry about submerging. This guy's going by outside that five mile diameter. Uh, after a while, you don't have to draw the cone, but the cone makes it absolutely clear very quickly whether you have to avoid that airplane or not. Alright, so that's the circle. You can also grab the arrowhead and resize the circle. Alright. Uh, magnifying glass, you can zoom in. I don't think you, yeah, you can zoom out with the with the right, you can zoom in with the left, which you can do with your uh, with your scroll scroll with your scroll wheel anyway, so that's no biggie. This is the protractor. Protractors are really neat. Uh, let's do a let's do a typical application here. You've got a course line right here, and uh, suppose that I want to intersect this course at a right angle. Let's find what a right angle is. Click on the course. Go down here to 
pretty close to where the intercept point would be. Click again. Draw it out until it says 90 degrees right there. Click. And then you can see that our intercept course is 300 degrees. So if I come to course 300, I'll be 90 degrees to the track. Um, you can also, if you have a boat out there, you have a ship out there, you can sight ahead of you. That's not very good, is it? And you can find out what the angle is to this particular target. And we know it'll be 360 degrees minus 144. I don't know what that is. I don't have the inclination to figure it out. But that'll tell you what your bearing to the target is, so you can raise the, telescope, uh, the periscope at the correct bearing. Here's a tool right here. This is a cool tool right here. I haven't had a chance to use it. You can click on certain units. If you can control ships, for instance, uh, friendly ships, you can click on that friendly ship and give it orders to help you out. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that works yet. And let's use, finally, let's use the ruler tool. The ruler tool draws lines. Now, if you, you click at the beginning of the course and you draw it out, the the angle shown where it crosses the compass rows is the course from the beginning to the end of the line. You're always at the end of the line. Well, some people have said the, the compass rose is upside down, but it really isn't. If you go straight south, you can see it reads 180 degrees. In order to do that, the 180 has to be on top, so that's a purposeful thing. It's not a bug in the program. Sorry to bust, burst your bubble there. Anything else? Eraser. Eraser erases. Everything it comes in contact with. Well, that's not the eraser. So we can click on just about anything. Get rid of it. There we go. And that's the end of the charting tutorial. That's really all there is to it. All these tools are fairly simple. If once you've been shown how they work, uh, it becomes second nature. It has a real vertical learning curve at first. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about the uh, Mr. Rogers thing at the beginning. Talk to you later. Bye.